everybody and welcome to another edition of the Human Physiology video tutorials with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now in today's presentation we're going to talk about the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. So we're going to think about the science behind how our muscle actually grows larger when we perform resistance training. Now there's a lot of misconception out there in terms of what happens to the muscle, the role of uh, protein and the role of various hormones. Hopefully we're going to try and get through to um, uh, the bottom of the knowledge that's currently available to improve our understanding of what's happening in the muscle. Now before we begin it's important for us to define a couple of uh, concepts so uh, every single muscle fiber in our body consists of individual muscle fiber strands which are known as myofibers or myofibrils and, and they contain sarcomeres which consist of actin, myosin uh, and a protein titin uh, and it's the sliding filament mechanism which causes the uh, myosin heads to bind to the actin uh, binding sites and move the, the uh, uh, muscle along, or to, sorry move the myofibrils along uh, to cause shortening of the muscle and you get contraction. Now when what we've got here is a normal myofibril Okay. Now we've also got something called the satellite cells which are located between the basal lamina. So the basal lamina would be um, just here. I'm just going to draw this out here surrounding the actual uh, muscle uh, and then you have the sarcolemma which, is, uh, which encapsulates the entire muscle and transmits the electrical impulses uh, to the T-tubules to cause um, uh, the release of calcium and a muscle contraction. So you have these satellite cells which are located between the um, basal la lamina and the sarcolemma, okay. Uh, if you looked at uh, a textbook, you'd be able to see the position of these uh, relative to uh, the muscle fiber. Now, what, what you can see is that satellite cells normally are inactive, the quiescent, okay. So uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. So they are quiescent, which basically means that they're inactive, they're not doing very much. Now, uh, satellite cells actually contain myonuclei, now the reason that I'm mentioning this, and I'll just grab uh, a pen of a different color. So satellite cells contain uh, myonuclei. So I'm going to put that down here, okay? Myonuclei. Now, now it's important to uh, mention that muscle fibers are not like other cells in the body in that they uh, don't regenerate by themselves. So they're referred to as post-mitotic. Okay, so muscle fibers are post-mitotic. They need a stimulus um, to actually regenerate uh, or well, to, to, to become damaged and then regenerate and repair. And the way that we uh, kind of regenerate our muscle fibers is by putting mechanical load through them. Okay, so when we do resistance training, we're actually causing damage to the muscle fibers and then those muscle fibers are coming back stronger. Now it's important that uh, you appreciate the fact that uh, the satellite cells are the donators of myonuclei to a muscle fiber. Okay so they give the genetic instruction to the, myo to the uh, myofiber to come back larger and then you get the hypertrophy. Now in general when you do resistance training we actually have the deposition of myo fibers or contractile elements uh, in parallel. So for example, if we, if we imagine that we have a muscle fiber here, and I'm gonna just do this here, which has been damaged by uh, some resistance training. So you've done a resistance training workout, you've got some uh, damage to the muscle fiber, okay? So as we've now got this damage, we're going to activate the satellite cells. Okay, so the satellite cells are now going to, if I just draw them out here, they're going to become activated and then they're going to proliferate. Okay, so we have activation, activation and proliferation of the satellite cells. And those satellite cells have each got myonuclei, okay, which they're going to um, donate to the the new to the damage, sorry, to the damaged myofiber. Okay, so what's going to happen next? Next is we're going to have migro migration or chemotaxis of these satellite cells to the damaged site. Okay, so 
that the satellites are going to move to the, the area of damage, they're going to do donate the myonuclei into the cell, okay, and then they're going to cause uh, the regeneration of that um, myofiber. They're the, 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 this myofiber will then have more satellite cells uh, added to it, and the fiber will actually repair itself, okay, so if we move along here, we'll then have a myofiber which is now all of a sudden larger, it's been, the damage has been repaired. Now there is some evidence that um, when you have the activation of satellite cells, these satellite cells can actually fuse together, okay, if you get a group of satellite cells, they can fuse together and form a new muscle fiber, okay, and this is called fiber hyperplasia. Now, this is called fiber hyperplasia. This, is, uh, this basically means, hyperplasia basically means an increase in number. Hypertrophy means an increase in size. Hyper, hyperplasia means an increase in number. Now, scientifically, there's not as much evidence for satellite cells coming together and forming new myofibers. There is much more evidence for uh, the chemotaxis. So I'll just put this word here, chemotaxis, um, chemotaxis of the activated satellite cells to a damaged site to cause the myofibers to actually uh, regenerate and come back stronger. And then obviously that cycle then starts again. So, you know, you kind of end up uh, in, in this position here. You then start to get further damage to uh, the muscle fibers as you do uh, resistance training and, and the whole process starts again. Now, what's important from uh, a resistance training perspective is that what we want to try and do is increase the amount of um, uh, pathways, for example, hormones in our body, which cause the activation of these uh, satellite cells. So uh, we're going to talk about those uh, very shortly, but we need to get some method of activating uh, these hormones, okay? So one point that I want to make about the, um, the myonuclei is that when you have the growth of new muscle fibers, you're passing on the genetic material of the original fiber to the new fiber as well. So the donation of the myonuclei is essentially passing on the genetic code, okay? So messenger RNA, which is involved in coding uh, for the proteins that will, be, will form into the muscle fibers, is passed on from one fiber, uh, or sorry, from one part of the uh, muscle fiber to, to the next. And so you get the repair uh, happening through genetic material being passed on and the fiber starts to get bigger.